It is a favorite day for many in Detroit. It's Flower Day at Eastern Market, and after the especially long, especially bitter winter, it's even more welcome than it usually is. Well, this was a climactic week for the long, awful odyssey of Larry Nasser and Michigan State University. It has cost the university an incalculable injury to its reputation, but the damages that will be paid out to the hundreds of victims are very calculable at a half billion dollars, $500 million, believed to be the largest settlement ever for a sexual abuse case involving an American college or university. And to many, that makes perfect sense, given the scale and nature of the crimes committed against so many young victims. Money can't really make it all better, of course. It's just the only way we seem to know how to address these kinds of horrors. But interestingly, the first reaction from one of the victims was disappointment, not over the amount, but over what she said was a lost opportunity to change policy at MSU to make a difference in the future. Coming up this morning, we're going to talk with one of Nasser's victims and her mother uh, from the long roster of the aggrieved about where the road goes from here. And a little later this week, the latest name swept up in the Me Too movement, a very familiar one to consumers of Detroit media. Metro Times, Michigan Radio, Wayne State's journalism program, Jack Lessonberry has also been a frequent guest of this program. But Deadline Detroit talked to quite a few women who say he acted inappropriately when he was their teacher and when they were students. Lessonberry is denying the allegations, but several of the outlets he serves are apparently now looking into the claims. For the men who are named in the many cases that have come to light, is there a way forward or is it pretty much over? It's all this morning on Flashpoint. You know, I never fully understand how courts and mediators and attorneys can affix price tags to the truly unpriceable. There is no amount of money that can erase the Larry Nassar experience from the minds of the 332 girls and women who lived through it. But Wednesday, the price was put at $500 million. Is it enough? And I don't mean in terms of dollars. Let's talk about it with Lindsay Lemke and her mother, Christy. You'll recall Christy from a uh, previous program. She was here back when the court proceedings were underway. Thank you both very much for Thank coming. Thank you. Lindsay, let me start with you. And um, what your reaction was when we uh, found out what the settlement was going to be that the mediators had worked out. It sounds like a lot of money, but I'm not sure money was all you all were looking for. No, personally, I think it was great that MSU did settle because it shows that there is some accountability that we're finally seeing, which we've been longing for for two years now. Yeah. So that was great to see. However, there's no non-monetary changes being made, which is a big part of settlement as well. So that was a little Me bit frustrating. Meaning what? What, what were non-monetary changes that you wanted to see? So we were looking to see um, a lot of policy changes going into place that were actually open to us and I know they talk a lot of behind the scenes about what they're doing but that's still stuff that we don't know even as a survivor as a student at Michigan State I don't know even these things of what what's going on behind the scenes so we want that stuff open we want to know what what are you guys doing to make MSU a safer place and to continue wanting to change the culture and as you told me earlier you're a student at Michigan State still and you told me that if a classmate came up and said I've been sexually assaulted what do I do you even in the position you've been in, you wouldn't know where to send her. At the, I, at that moment. I still wouldn't. And every semester we do this online simulation of, you know, what happens if you go to a party and you see something of sexual assault nature happen. Yeah. And it's very cookie cutter. It's not real life what you would do. And you only take those so you can see your grades at the end of the semester. Yeah. So that, that goes to show how yeah. serious they're taking yeah. sexual assault in Michigan State. Christy, um, I, I think a lot of people saw this settlement announcement as sort of being finally this is uh, a, a kind of well over. Right. Uh, I don't think you see it that way. No, we don't see that it's over at all. There are still many people that need to be held accountable for this. And, and that includes USAG, it includes John Getter, it includes Kathy Clegg is from MSU. So all those people still need to be held accountable. So this is a start but there's so much more to do yet, so much more. What was your reaction to the dollar figure? Um, it wasn't so much about the dollar figure to me. Um, it was all about the accountability factor and they still don't want to take accountability for any of it. They didn't want to apologize to the girls. They, you know, there were just so many things that they were saying that they didn't want to do. Well, you know, and it's, it's, it's so much more about that than just the money. 
I, I, th I think we have John Engler's uh, statement that uh, was released at the end of last week, and, and this did, I think, in, uh, include a, a, a bit of an apology, it seemed. Um, and not only that, but he, uh, have, we got the, have we got the quotation from John Engler ready? Um, but he also talked to the, uh, uh, here it is, uh, deeply regret, uh, <laughs> I should have brought my glasses out, Re regret the injury done to so many girls and young women and to their families by a physician operating under the aegis of this university. For that, uh, I and every leader on this campus apologize, but more important, we offer the comprehensive actions being taken as proof we're serious about changing MSU. So Lindsay, th in fact, I, I, I just got a literal eye roll from you. you that, the changes he's speaking about, creating some type of better accountability, some kind of chain, uh, creating new offices for people to report these things. Now, those maybe haven't been rolled out in a big enough way yet, but doesn't that speak to a little bit to what you're talking about? I think those things are great, but there's one, there's just, there are still people working at Michigan State that knew about Larry Nassar. And I think for me, that's the biggest thing. We've learned now about um, the athletic trainer at Michigan State, Destiny Teachner Hawk, who knew about Larry Nassar back in 1998 and he was still allowed to work. Clagus, who was allowed to retire on suspension and is still receiving a pension from Michigan State. Dr. Covan, who was involved with the Title IX investigation for Amanda Thomas show in 2014, is still working there. Yeah. And none of these people took correct actions to protect us. So until you get rid of these people who enabled him, how are we supposed to trust that you're really trying to make change? Well, Christy, a lot of people, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth. A number of people, though, uh, that have been a part of the settlement and the action want to see more. Uh, they, w they want to see the, the trustees resigned. They want to see full change at the board. They'd like to see John Engler resign. Where yeah. are you on MSU leadership? Um, I would like to see them all resign, all of them. Um, I think they need to have a clean slate to start out, and then they can move forward with all these changes that he says that they're going to be making. Um, I mean, Luana Simon is still on campus. She's got this fabulous office, from what I hear, and is still making more money than what she was making when she um, supposedly resigned. I mean, it's just stuff like that. It's just you hear stuff like that, and it's like, are you kidding me? You know, there, there's so many things that need to be changed, and I think to start out having everybody leave, that would be great. Uh, there was a column in the um, uh, Lansing State Journal this past week uh, written by uh, Graham Couch, and he basically said um, Michigan State needs to stop fighting with these victims. Right. You f they really, you should be on the same team. Lindsay, you're, you were one of the first to come forward, actually, in all this. Is it, it, I imagine it's felt like a fight all along. Yeah, and one of my statements I made after settlement was that for the past 20 months, that's exactly what I've done. I've woken up every single day and just done my best to fight for justice, and I feel like I have to prove my abuse, and I have to prove why it was wrong, which is insane because abuse is abuse no matter what, and it sh it, in anybody's mind, that should just be wrong. So I don't understand what, what there is to protect about Larry Nassar and all these people who enabled him. I asked you earlier, how, with 332, that's an overwhelming number of girls and women, I asked you earlier how many more you thought were there that have not been a part of this. Your answer was, startling to me but you think it's it was it, hundreds hundreds of hundreds girls that of still others. have not reported and i know this for a fact because i receive messages every single day from girls who are survivors but they they don't have the strength yet to come forward with their story because of the way that these institutions are handling it because they don't feel like they have any accountability and they don't care about us they don't care. Christy, the, with the way that you both have been very up, uh, forward with this and have been the face and voice for a lot of this, has it at all helped you get through it or has it made it tougher to just keep living it every moment of every no, day? No, it's been therapeutic actually and it kind of helps to talk about it. Um, we, we do it almost every day. Yeah. Uh, we talk to many media outlets. Um, but no, it helps us because then, you know, you can, you know that other people are going through the same thing you're going through and when you talk about it, it's just not me as a mother who missed out on this. There's, there's many families, yeah, yeah. you know, so then it makes me feel better and I'm sure it makes these girls feel better to be around one another and be able to talk about it. And that, uh, as they said, the fight goes on. In fact, you're leaving me to go talk to Time Magazine, so uh, it, it is a very full schedule for both of you, and I really appreciate you being here. Hey, no Best problem. To we're we're glad to do it. Thank you. You bet. Glad to do it. Uh, we come back, we'll talk about uh, another new chapter in the Me Too movement and how men move forward in this day and age. Can they? This is Flashpoint.